Hey guys and welcome back to another Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make it so an AI can catch you while you're hiding in a locker. So in a previous tutorial I've shown you how to create the system in which you can hide in the locker which I'll show you now and today it's going to be an AI catches you. So I can go in here, I can press H and I can hide in the locker, move around and all that good stuff and press H to get back out again. As you see there the AI is searching through the locker, no one's in there so it's closed the door again. It opened it and did nothing and closed again because it wasn't in there. Now let's say I get in that locker this time, so I go over here, get in this locker, it's then going to search through it, find me in there, and catch me. So let's have a look at this, it's turned, opened the door, caught me, closed the door again, and now I've restarted back here, perfectly like so. So this is very easy to customise and you can change this however you like, and in today's episode I'm not going to go over making it go search lockers, it's just going to be so if it's near a locker it will search it, and in a future episode I'll make it so the AI will run towards the locker and then search the random ones perfectly like so, but again you have to be in a locker for it to catch you. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our AI. So mine's just called Locker AI and open that up straight away. If you don't have one, I do have videos where I go over creating these. And what I'm going to do in here is I'm just going to right click and add a custom event, naming this Catch Player, like so, let me zoom in. So we're going to fire this off when we want to catch the player. Out of this, I'm going to get a multi sphere trace by channel like so and we're doing multi because it might interact with multiple actors so if you have a lampshade next to a locker it might hit the lamp and not the locker so we want to go through all of them until we hit the locker and it's a sphere so it goes all around the AI not just directly in front of it because it might not be looking in the correct direction and so for the start and end I'm just going to right click and get actor location and that is going to be the start and end because I want the sphere to start and end on the actor AI like so, and the radius I'm going to set to be 150. You can set that to be whatever you like, but I found that to be quite a good radius. Again, change it to be what you want, and you can change the draw debug type from none to four duration so you can see what it looks like. But again, that's good for me. So then I'm going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, execution in there, condition as the return value. Now you can see we don't have a break hit result anymore, we now have out hits. So what we're going to do is the out hits is an array. So we're going to go into a for each loop with break, the execution going into true of the branch, so it only fires this off if it hits something. Then out of the array element, we can now get our break hit result that we wanted before. And I'm going to open that up to get the more details, and I'm going to come out of hit actor, and I'm going to cast to my locker. So hit actor is cast to locker BP like that, or locker hide BP for me, connecting that into the loop body there. And I can close this and what this is going to do is for every single array element in the array of actors it hits it's going to check to see if it's the locker and we can do that by casting to the locker if it is the locker it will come out of this if it isn't it will be cast failed so we can right click as locker hide bp promote it to variable naming this locker ref and then out the execution of that we can go all the way back into the break of the for each loop like so so now we're stopping the loop because we found the locker which we want to interact with so it's going to interact with the first locker that it sees. And so that is how we now decide which locker we want to go into. So off of completed, we want to then do the code for going into the locker or searching through it. So we're going to hold down S and left click to get a sequence, connecting that into completed. And I'll do then zero in a second. Then one, we want to rotate the actor and the AI so it's facing the locker to look through it. So to do that, I'm going to come out of then one and set actor rotation like so. In the new rotation, we want to R interp to it. So we're going to right click and get R interp to, with a return value going to the new rotation there. The delta time is going to be get world delta seconds, and the interp speed I'm going to set as 5. You can set it to be whatever you like, but 5 seems to be a good value for me, which I found. And the current rotation wants to just be the actor's current rotation. So we can right click and get actor rotation like so, connecting that into the current there. And the target is you want to find the rotation between the player and the AI. So now the player, we're going to be using the locker, so essentially it's going to look through the locker, so even if we're not there, it will still search through the locker perfectly. So we can drag and drop in our locker ref there, get locker ref, and out of this we can get actor location like so, and we can also right click and get actor location of just the AI now, and then we can come out of the top one, so just the AI's location, and find look at rotation, 
start being the AI's location, target being the locker location. And the return value of that will go into the target of the R interp2, perfectly like so. So it wants to move from its current rotation to the rotation to look at the locker with a speed of five and the world delta seconds like so, and that should now work for us. However, it's only gonna do this once, so we want to actually loop this. So a simple way of doing that is if I just move this down, then hold down B and left click to get a branch with true going to set active location. And the condition, I'm gonna right click, promote to variable, naming this one should loop, question mark like so, compile and change its default value to be false. Moving that into there, and in front of the branch, I'm gonna right click, add a custom event, naming this loop rot for loop rotation, like so. So essentially, we're just gonna create a mini loop so that we can then constantly be rotating it for however long we need, so we'll always go to the correct rotation. And that is why we have then zero, so we can decide when we want to stop looping. So off of then zero, we're gonna set should loop to true, and then we're gonna hold down D, left click to get a delay, with the duration as 0.5, as I found for me, 0.5 was enough for it to fully rotate, but you're going to want to change that for how long it is for you. So essentially this is the speed at which it's going to rotate by. So after it's finished rotating and it's facing the locker, that's the duration of that. After this, we're going to set should loop to false. So it's going to end this loop here, so it will come out false and not do anything else. And after the set act of rotation as well, let's finish this loop. We're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay with a duration as 0.01, so it's very, very quick and you can't notice. And completed, we're just going to call function loop rot like so. So that way it's gonna create the loop of rotating the AI. And that is gonna work perfectly for us. However, there is one other thing I want to do is I'm just gonna select all of this that we've just done off the sequence, move it out a bit like so. And then I'm gonna right click and get an is valid node. Because I've just thought if this isn't close enough to a locker, this isn't going to work. So we want the is valid with a question mark there because it's going to try to access the locker to try and rotate to it. But obviously it isn't going to set it because it will come off of completed even if it hasn't found a locker. So the execution will go in completed, is valid will go in the sequence and the input object is going to be our locker ref like so. So it's only going to do this code if we've actually hit a locker and if we're close enough to a locker like that. Alternatively, we could come out of this set here and not the completed but this is gonna work perfectly well for us as well. So you kind of choose which one you want to do there. Either one will work fine. We're gonna compile and save that. And what we want to set up next is actually opening and closing the locker door. So to do that, we want to open up our locker BP. So I'm gonna minimize this and then open up my locker hide BP here. And if I go into my event graph of open door, what I'm gonna do is select the timeline, the lerb and the angles and set rotation, control C to copy, Go back to my normal event graph and hit Control v to paste, like so. And now we have this timeline here so we can open and close the door. In front of this, I'm gonna right click, add a custom event, naming it open door or AI search, actually I might, I might do. So AI search door, like so. And I'm gonna connect that into the play from start of the timeline. So again, we can call this from our AI blueprint so that it will then search through and open and close the door. So I wanna make this door be open for a bit longer. So I'm gonna double click the timeline to open it up and I'm gonna change the length to be four. You can set this to whatever you like, but from my testing earlier, I found four was good. And what I'm gonna do is select this bottom value here and just set the time to four, value keeping at zero. Right click, add another key with a time of 3.5 and a value of one. So now if I zoom out, what you can see is that now instead, what's gonna happen is it's gonna open, stay open, and close. And it's gonna be open for three seconds. So again, change that to be what if you like, but that's gonna work perfectly for me. I'm gonna compile, save, and I can close this now, as that's all we need to do in there. And what we're also gonna do is set up the code for catching the player or killing the player in the character blueprint. So I'm gonna minimize this, go to content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. And what I'm gonna do in here is just set up a simple fade to black and then restart another level. You can do whatever you want, so you can set up a respawn system, so you actually destroy the actor, respawn the player, or you can set up going to a main menu, or do what I'm doing and just restart the level. Either way works, and I do have different videos for different methods as well, i.e. respawning and main menus. So the link for those will be in the description down below. But what I'm gonna do is right click, add a custom event, naming this one dead, 
or kill player or anything along this line. So actually I might name it kill player. That makes a bit more sense. And out of this, I'm going to right click and get camera, sorry, get player camera manager like so. And then I'm going to start camera fade, connecting that into there like so. I'm going to go from alpha zero to alpha one with a duration of one second. So it's going to go from fully see-through, i.e. no color, to fully non-see-through, so black, because I've got it set to black there, so fully black, over one second, and I will fade the auto, and will hold when finished as well. I'm going to hold down D, left click to get a delay. Out of this, I'm going to set the duration to be, let's say, 1.5 seconds, so one and a half seconds after we start the fade, we're then going to just reset the level. So for me, I'll get open level, and the level name, you want to make sure you spell it correctly, so for me, that is the third person example map like so. Again, set this up to be one if you want for killing the player. Again, this is what I want, so this will work perfectly for me. Then compile, save, and we can also close that as that's all we need to do in there. Now back in our AI blueprint, what we can do is after we set should loop to false here, I'm gonna get my locker reference, so get locker ref there. And out of this, I'm going to open the door. Or what did I name it, sorry, AI search door there. So we're calling the function and the custom event we just named for opening and closing the door. Then after this, I'm going to hold down B and left click to get a branch execution going in there. And the condition is going to be if the player is hiding in that locker. So very simply, when you come out of locker ref and get is hiding. If you don't have this boolean, then you'll need to go watch my video or make sure you haven't missed something out in that video because we have that in here. And this is true when the player is in the locker and false when we're not in the locker. Then we can set that into the branch there because essentially it's only going to kill the player if the player is in that specific locker. So false, we don't want to do anything because the player is not in there. True, we want to kill the player. So I'm going to play anim montage like so and I'll put that in there in a second. After this, I'm going to hold down D, left click to get a delay. I'm going to have this duration as one. You can set it to be one if you like. And after completed, I'm then going to cast to my character, which for me is the third person character with the object being get player character. And out of this, we're gonna kill the player. So again, for me, what I did was as third person character, I've then just got call function kill player, perfectly like so. And if you're using my respawn system, what you can do is simply just instead of kill player, you can just destroy actor, but as third person character there, like so. And now let's set up the animation. So I'm gonna compile and save this, minimize it, and I'm going to go back to my locker AI folder, like so. And you can see I have this animation here, which I've used in a previous tutorial. It's from Mixmo.com, and I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. You just want to right click on the animation, go to create, create and montage, and then you'll get this animation montage here, like so. With that selected, go back into your AI blueprint, and you can press this arrow here next to anim montage, or just manually input it there. And now this will play your animation montage for that, like so. Compile and save, and that should be the code done. However, just one thing, make sure you are allowing the use of animation montages for that character. So for me, it's just on the mannequin. So I can go to content, mannequin, animations, third person anim BP, but essentially open up your AI's animation blueprint. And in the anim graph, you wanna make sure you have slot default slot coming out of the state machine and going into the output pose there, which again, just allows the use of animation blueprints. Minimize and let's hit play to test this out. Also one thing, just so I can test this out, what I'm going to do for the moment is off of event begin play, I'm just going to make it search through and catch the player after 10 seconds. So I'll put a delay of 10, and out of this, I'll catch player. And again, in a future episode, I'm going to be making it so it searches the nearest locker, so it will run to that locker, or if it sees the player go into a locker, it will run towards it. But again, for the moment, I'm just setting up actually catching the player like so. So let's hit play, I'll go into this locker and we'll see what happens. So if we wait 10 seconds, we should see that nothing will happen to me as it's going to search through the other locker, not this one. So again, nothing will happen, but it should open and close that door while looking through it and then do nothing else afterwards. So I get out now, you can see that, yep, it's facing the locker because it searched through it, but it didn't do anything. So if we try again, but we get inside this locker this time, you'll see that it's going to open the door, or look towards the door, sorry, open it and then catch us. So let's have a look at that working perfectly like so. So it looks towards us, sees we're in here, catches us, and then we restart the level working perfectly like so. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set it up so it's going to turn it towards the locker, 
open it, search through it to see if the player is in there. If it's not, it's going to close the door again and do nothing. However, if the player is in there, it's going to open the door, search through, see that we're in there, catch us and do whatever you code you have for killing the player. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.